Are you going on summer vacation? And maybe you've got activities, outdoor activities planned for that summer vacation. Well, today we're gonna to talk about what to pack so that you can do those activities, not just in style, but in comfort and safely too. ladies and welcome to my first outdoor video. <laughs> I just thought it would be appropriate to get outside to talk about what to pack for our summer vacation when we are planning to participate in some outdoor activities and specifically ones that maybe you're not avid at but you do still want to be dressed comfortably and appropriately for that activity on your vacation so that you can participate and be comfortable and you can be safe and you could also just do that thing with some ease. And so we're gonna talk about specifically what to wear, what to pack for camping or, or hiking rather, what to pack for kayaking and canoeing, and then also horseback riding. So those are three things we're gonna hit and really the hiking clothing as well as the gear is gonna cover a lot of things. And I'm also gonna to try to help us to do multi-use packing so that you're not overpacking. We're gonna keep that suitcase light. And I'm also gonna help you find new purchases at a less expensive price point. So let me get started on what you're gonna need for hiking. All right, first of all, let's talk about the clothing. Now I'm actually wearing a hiking shirt and shorts right now. These are from, this one's from L.L. Bean. I'm, I don't think you can see my shorts there from Columbia, but I also have the L.L. Bean shorts here that I am showing in this blog post, this recent blog post. And I definitely want you to check it out because I love these hiking clothes and some of the gear I'm sharing are in that post also. But I specifically wanted to show you these shorts because you can see that they have a moisture wicking band along the waistband. And you know what, that is what we wanna be looking for in our hiking clothing, just that outdoor clothing altogether. We want it moisture wicking, we want it rip resistant, we want it to be lightweight and to feel good and soft on our skin. We also want it to be quick drying. So you really need to look for those qualities. And it's a bonus if it can also have an SPF factor so that it protects you from the sun. For instance, I have this little shirt here. It's just a sleeveless shirt, kind of like what I'm wearing now, but it's by Columbia. It has some nice zipper pockets in the front, which are always great for just putting your ID in there or something like that but it once again has that sun protection factor, which is such a bonus. So you definitely, no matter what else you do, you really do want the clothing that is appropriate for hiking or those outdoor activities because it is gonna be crucial when it is so hot. Do not wear denim jeans when you're hiking. That is like the worst thing you can wear. They just start weighing down as they get moist. They will be so uncomfortable. They're always chafing. It will not be good, so don't do that. The next thing, of course, you're gonna need for your hiking is the proper footwear. I suggest if you're traveling and you're trying to pack things in a suitcase that you have lightweight hiking shoes. Forget the boots unless you're doing really heavy duty hiking, maybe for multiple days. These shoes are by Oraz. They're lightweight, they are waterproof, so they're great for, especially if you're gonna be hiking where there is water or streams you're gonna be crossing. These are new to me, but I really like them. One of the things I like about these hiking shoes is they have a great, insole that is perfect for arch support. So I really like this. But if you are looking for something that is gonna do cross duty through hiking and maybe canoeing or kayaking or other water type activities, then I suggest something like this Keen sandal. Um, this sandal would actually be appropriate for light hiking and also though for those water sports like kayaking and canoeing, where as you're getting in or out of the watercraft, you might have to step into the river or stream. So I think those crossed purpose shoes are really gonna serve you well. Now, if you are hiking, I do think it's a good idea to wear wool socks with your hiking shoes or hiking boots. Um, I know that may sound surprising, but you don't wanna wear cotton once again. Wool socks are gonna keep your feet drier. You could also wear silk sock liners if you like, or 
I have found these Smart Wool Socks by L.L. Bean, and they come in different sizes, different lengths and everything, and they serve the purpose of keeping your feet dry, but also being comfortable, and they're ideal for summertime. Let's talk about a few of the accessories that you're gonna want hiking. A lot of people ask me about trekking poles. I do have trekking poles, I love them. Um, if you're gonna do a lot of hiking, I definitely suggest them. They really can take out about 29% of the impact that your knees and ankles endure from hiking. If you're going to purchase hiking poles or trekking poles, I definitely suggest that you go ahead and spend the extra 10, 20, 30 dollars and get some with shock absorbency in them. So I found these at L.L. Bean and I really think they check all the boxes for me. They look like they're lightweight, they're adjustable for different heights, you could, they're compressible so you can put them in your suitcase and they have that shock absorbency. All right, let's talk about packs. You're gonna need a pack when you're hiking, probably, but there's all different kinds. There are, of course, just little fanny packs like this one, which is basically just good for the essentials. It's good to hold your ID, which by the way, you need to go ahead and set your an ID up with all of your medical information, your address, your phone number, who you are and all that, and keep that with you anytime you're doing outdoor activities like kayaking or hiking or horseback riding, anything like that, um, just so people know who you are in case of emergency. I know that sounds gruesome, but it's really necessary. And just this little pack is about all it's gonna handle is your ID, maybe your phone or flashlight. But uh, the second kind of pack you could get, of course, is a sling like this one. And what I like about this, and really all the packs that I found at L.L. Bean work this way too, it has a compressible pack that you can put this, big, this little sling backpack in and it packs down like this to put in your suitcase or your carry-on bag. But let's, let's see what happens when I pull it all out of here. This pack That little zipper pack goes inside and I have a really nice pack here that you can see in these photos how me using but you can really fit um, a lunch in here, snacks, you can fit a water bottle, you can fit a jacket, a little jacket maybe. So this is perfect if you've got to carry your own pack, say like just for you. You're trying to carry your lunch, your water, your essentials. Now here's another pack. Uh, my husband likes to carry a kind of a backpack that once again rests on the hips. I have one of those here for you. I usually convince him to carry all of our stuff in that pack. And you can carry a couple bottles of water in there and probably lunch for two of you. If you want a day backpack, then that's exactly what you need to look for. It's one that says it's a day trip pack. Don't go hog wild on this. You do not need a heavy duty, complicated backpack for a day trip. You just need something that's gonna hold water for two, maybe your food, a light jacket, you know, that bandana, those essentials, a uh, flashlight, maybe some toilet paper is a good idea too. So just a great backpack there though. So those, those are some essentials that you'll want if you're hiking. I really suggest that you take a bandana no matter which of these activities you're doing. It is surprising how often when I've, I'm out on a hike, if I forget my bandana, which I think, oh, I wish I had my bandana. You can put it around your neck, you can tuck it in a pocket, you can put it in a pack, but it is the perfect thing to pull out to wipe away sweat. Um, just or use as a napkin if you're having a picnic on the trail or something. Take you a few bandanas, take extras for those other people in your family, they're gonna thank you. Another thing of course you're gonna want on really any of these activities is water. So you can of course get those camel bags if you're hiking or something, but really the main thing you need is just a good water bottle. You could have a metal one like this or you could use a plastic one. I definitely really suggest one that is like you're using a reusable plastic bottle, not just a plastic water bottle that you bought you know in the bundles because you don't want to be tempted to leave it there whatever you pack in you want to pack out and you want something that is durable that's going to keep your liquids cool so this one is from ll bean but i'll link to a couple of other ones down in the description box below let's talk sunglasses i recently got these sunglasses at ll bean and what i like about them is is that they are not polarized and the reason that is is because with polarization it makes it harder to read your gadgets like your phone your uh, gps system your watch and when you're out hiking you're out navigating things you have to be able to read things so these are actually bifocals 
and they are also sunglasses. So these are really nifty. You're gonna definitely want some kind of a, a sports sunglass like that that you can take for your activities. Now let's talk quickly about canoeing or kayaking. Any special considerations there? You can wear your swimsuit and I definitely actually suggest it, but I also suggest that you wear those hiking shorts over your swimsuit. Once again, don't wear your denim shorts over your swimsuit when you're hiking or I mean, excuse me, when you're kayaking or canoeing because if it gets wet, those denim shorts get wet, they are just going to weigh you down and you're gonna be so miserable. So wear something once again that is quick drying. Once again, well, you're gonna want those sandals, those waterproof sandals or shoes. I found some other waterproof or water shoes uh, from Amazon and Walmart here that I'm also gonna show you in the description box below. So you can check there because you know what? If you're not doing a lot of this, you don't wanna spend a lot of money, but you do wanna be appropriately attired. So look for those shoes at Amazon and Walmart. I think those are a great buy. When you're kayaking and canoeing, you also might want a towel. I suggest one of these small towels though, these microfiber, you know, really thirsty small towels. You can easily pack this in your suitcase then you can pack it in your little backpack like this and take it with you and it will not take up a lot of room you could take a small cooler or a backpack to keep a little bit of a snacks or some drinks with you on those water um, activities but don't take styrofoam they don't like for you to bring styrofoam because it's not good for the environment especially if it you know falls out or something so just keep those sorts of things in mind Horseback riding, let's talk about that quickly. I've been horseback riding on a lot of vacations and we just love doing that as a family or as a couple. And the thing that you always want when you're horseback riding is you just need some long pants. So I like jeans for horseback riding or you could wear your long hiking pants or another great option if you're doing multiple activities that you need these clo this clothing for. And then also I like socks and closed toed shoes. Now they don't have to be cowboy boots, but I don't suggest your really big hiking boots because they're not gonna fit in the stirrups real well. So that's why these smaller hiking shoes are a good you know, possibility or just your regular sneakers even, but definitely wear some socks and some shoes and those long pants, I think, to be more comfortable horseback riding. One more tip I have just really for all of these activities, these outdoor activities, is to, from your home, because you're gonna have to buy them if you don't take them from home, take you some good, just some plastic Ziploc bags, the zipper bags, preferably maybe the freezer bags. I even suggest taking them in different sizes. That's a good thing to put your ID in. It's also a good place to put your cell phone or a, a flashlight or anything, your camera, any of those things that you're trying to keep water protected um, as you're hiking, as you're kayaking or canoeing or even horseback riding. I think that's just a great place to keep those things. So take those plastic zipper bags from home. Don't forget your sunscreen. I suggest a good heavy duty mineral sunscreen and specifically look for one that it says it's for sports. That means you can sweat through it, you can get it wet and it's still gonna keep working. You want one that has a high enough sun protection factor to work for you at least for a couple of hours or so. I would love to hear from you today in the comments. Let me know what kind of activities that you are looking forward to on your vacation. I hope I've helped you out a little bit as you're thinking through packing for those activities on vacation. Thanks for joining me outside. I know there's been some noise going on. I am actually in a place where they are trail biking or they're getting off of the river with their kayaks and canoes. So it is a busy bustling place and that may be where you're going on vacation. I am so happy for you. I hope you enjoy every minute of it and I hope you feel appropriately clothed and geared for those activities. Thanks for, so much for joining me today. Be sure and visit my website at dressformyday.com and also stay with me on Instagram at dressformyday. Thanks. See you ladies.